Fly Girl Surfing and Sports is brought to you by the Surf Bus, the original North Shore Activities Tour. She wakes up and takes up a surfboard, heads out, out from the seashore, from the world in where she lives. She's got no fears, worries at all right there, just the smell of salt water that's in the air, and the sunrise. Aloha guys, I'm Paige Delander, your host for this show, and it's great to be here with you. We had a great talk with surf legend Kayala Kennelly about her new board shorts, equality, big waves, and mental health. We'll also bring you the action from the Carissa Moore's fifth world title from California. It was a battle between her and Tatiana Weston Webb. We'll also have highlights of the Supergirl Pro. So. First up, let's check out DJ KK's new shorts. They are so comfortable. Here's 15 minutes with the superstar, Kayala Kennelly. And I was always trying to get them to make board shorts for women that were actually made out of the really great materials that they used for the guy shorts. And they, they just wouldn't do it, you know, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't make them in cuts that were like anything other than like a, you know, tiny, tiny short shorts where, you know, you get thigh rash and stuff like that. So I used to just wear the guys, the men's board shorts, because they were just much better material, much stretchier, much more comfortable, but even those were like, you know, too long, they'd kind of catch on my knees, so I even, towards like the end of my career, started cutting them, I would take men's board shorts and just cut them to like, you know, mid-thigh length, and then, you know, I'd post pictures of me surfing and stuff in them on my Instagram, and, and I'd have women reaching out to me like, oh my god, like, where did you get those board shorts at that length, like, where do I buy those, and I was like, oh, they're just men's ones that I cut, and then that kind of got me thinking, like, God, I've been asking these surf brands for, you know, almost two decades now to just design board shorts for women, and the surf industry is just not doing it, so I decided um, to make my own, like, specialty board shirt brand just for women's board shorts. Um, I didn't bring all three colors, and I actually have some new, uh, some new colors coming in in the next order, but, um, we got black, yellow, and there's pink right now, and then I, I have a blue and like a, a really cool patterned one. It's gonna be the next one. But as you can see, they're like the four-way stretch material. They come up to like right about mid-thigh. So it's really like the perfect length. And um, you know, I, I, I put in this like really groundbreaking thing called a pocket in the back with a, like a leash. Loop. Apparently, this is like a big deal because they never designed pockets on women's board shorts. Keys, yeah, because a lot of the a lot of the you know major surf brands, if they do make board shorts for women, they don't include a pocket. It's like we don't know how to drive a car or we don't you know live in our own houses. I mean, how would I get to the beach? My boyfriend doesn't drive me. I I don't have car keys. <laughs> I really like uh, the the name and the logo. Um, I designed it myself. It actually has a lot of equality symbolism in the logo. So you have a um, greater than sign and a less than sign separated by an equal sign. So we're not greater than men, we're not less than men, we're equal. We deserve equal performance, surfing, water gear. started over at Mavericks, um, there was a big wave event at Mavericks uh, called the Titans of Mavericks, and they, they would just wouldn't invite the women, and you know, people like, like Bianca, and, and uh, I think Savannah Shaughnessy, and, and some of the other Mavericks female surfers just kept asking for them to like invite women to this event, and they just kept denying the women, 
And so um, what ended up happening is we got a female on the California Coastal Commission who have, happened to be an activist, um, and they voted to they voted to include women in the event. They, they basically made it so that they, the contest promoters had to include women in the event. And then they went ahead and, um, you know, they, they got a, a female beach marshal. They got like a female, you know, t-shirt folder. But no athletes. No athletes. And, so, and then the next year, they invited some athletes, and then they said they were going to do two rounds of, to narrow it down to who actually got into the contest. And by the time you know, they went through round one, round two of, of selections of who's going to get invited, of course, all the female athletes were gone. So there was a lot of empty gestures. Um, and then finally, the WSL ended up buying the permit um, from the Titans and Mavericks. And when they did that, we came to WSL and said, we, you know, we want you to include the women. And they said, yes, no problem. And, they said, and then we said, oh, we'd also want equal pay because we're going out and surfing in the same conditions as the guys. You know, we're putting ourselves in, in, in the same kinds of dangers. Uh, so we want equal pay. So that's kind of how the equal pay thing started. For the last decade or more, they've completely excluded the women from any professional events uh, on the North Shore. Uh, they haven't been in the in the Triple Crown of Surfing for over 10 years. Uh, and so, you know, we had to go to the city and county, you know, Betty DiPolito and um, uh, Sabrina Brennan and, and Carol Phillips. We all went to the um, Hawaii City and County and asked our representatives because, you know, beaches are public property and so if you are excluding the women on public grounds, um, you know, that's gender-based uh, discrimination. So that's kind of the basis for how we're able to use the permitting system to basically require uh, anybody that pulls a permit for a contest on the North Shore be required to include a women's division in their competition. You know, it sucks that you actually, like, have to go that route where you f force people's hand. But if you don't, like, they literally will just keep excluding the women indefinitely, you know. It's like sometimes you just have to make people do the right thing. I think that um, WSL announced, like, for the next winter season, there's going to be a women's triple crown. And they're going to have Haleiwa, Sunset, and Pipeline, just like the guys. So, you know, literally went from over 10 years of being excluded from every single contest in the Triple Crown to finally, you know, getting the equal opportunity. And, you know, sometimes people can be very critical of the women, especially like having an event at Pipe, you know, they'll, they'll say like, oh, can the women actually like surf Pipe? And it's like, they're never given the opportunity, you know, apart from Betty's contest that, you know, gets run in April when it's, you know, the end of winter and you know there's not really any winter swells anymore like when do women get the opportunity to go out and surf pipe you know um, there's there's usually like 80 or 100 of the best guys out there during the winter and it's like impossible to get waves and you know they just have never been given that opportunity whereas like junior men's will have competitions at pipe where they can like start to go surf pipe with only a couple people in the water and like push their push their level and, and get comfortable the women just haven't had that so I think that you know, if they're finally giving the women that, I think the women will absolutely rise to the occasion. I mean, you saw in the, the Pipe Masters, Carissa was killing it, you know. Tyler, all, all the girls were, you know, they stepped it up. I thought they did a, an awesome job, and I think that that will just get better and better. surfing pipe when I was like a teenager you know I was flying over here from Kauai and and surfing in the triple crown of surfing <laughs> back in the day when they actually used to have women in the triple crown of surfing um, and yeah I would go I would go surf pipe and and um, I had the amazing opportunity of, of getting to film blue crush and go surf pipe and have guys like 
claw blocking for me and I actually got to like get some waves and that was amazing. So I've had some I've had some um some success at pipe. It's it gets harder and harder. You know, I feel like it gets more crowded and more aggressive every year. But um I still love it. I really uh liked the Red Bull magnitude format, you know, I thought it was I thought it was awesome, you know, because yeah, it's really hard when it's just like a one day event. You know, once they call it on you kind of like it's whatever you get, you know, on the day. Like, it could be good in the morning. It could be, I mean, perfect example, 2017 uh, Piahi Challenge. Like, you know, they sent the women out first here in the morning, and it was just, like, suicide. Uh, it was just so big and so choppy. And then they sent um, the men out right afterwards, and they just were getting absolutely mauled and then they ended up calling the event off because it was too dangerous and they were towing by the afternoon so you know things can change really quickly um conditions can change really quickly so to have like a format where it was like you got to go out and charge big waves all winter long you know multiple different swells you know another cool thing about it too is you could just be having an off day you know um you you might you know, be injured or have your period or just, you know, feeling sick, feeling off, whatever. And, you know, if you, if they call it, they call it up on that day and it's a one day event, like that's your only shot. Whereas this like gives you the entire winter to like really pick and choose like where you want to surf, when you want to surf, you know, um, yeah, I'm really feeling it today. I'm going to send it extra hard, you know, or, oh, I'm not really, not really feeling it today. Maybe I'm going to back off a little bit, you know, it gives you it gives the opportunity for your to put your best performances forward, I think. For those of you out there that are just, you know, struggling, you know, um, with with depression or just, you know, having a really hard time, you know, just go talk to somebody like don't don't just keep it to yourself and just feel like you know mind over matter and you, you know you can just like power through it like just go talk to somebody get the help you need you know don't don't feel embarrassed or ashamed like we all struggle you know I think we need to speak up more and kind of get rid of the stigma around mental health you know um and, and we should just reframe it, you know, it's, everybody should be working on their mental health, you know, it's, it's, to, it's like going to the gym, but for your, your, your mind and your emotions, like, there should be no shame around uh, wanting to do maintenance on that. I'm so glad that nobody ever started and, and finished a, a documentary because like so much stuff when I think of like when that when that was and to now it's just like so much stuff has happened like imagine if imagine if I had done a documentary like five or ten years ago like it would have missed so many amazing things you know so people tell me I should do a documentary but I'm, I'm not in a huge rush honestly. I'm hoping the board shirt brand blows up. I really am. I mean, it's not so much about run like a, a huge corporation, you know. It's, for me, it's like I'm not even starting like a clothing brand, you know. Like I make tanks and I think I did some hoodies and stuff, but it's really about like specifically making board shorts for women, you know, um, because I just feel like they – they don't have they don't have any options you know you go on you go on any of like the 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 surf the major surf brands it's like thousands of pairs of of guys board shorts in every freaking color you can imagine and the women just have like one or two to choose from and they're usually you know made with subpar materials horrible cuts uh just the wrong lengths just not not anything that would be functional or high performance. So I just feel like there is a huge um, demand for something like that and nobody's filling it. So, 
You know, I wanted to make board shorts for women that's accessible to all women. I want to do like much bigger sizes and stuff too. One thing I'm running into right now is just my supplier is not letting me order the range of sizes yet that I want. Um, but as the company grows, um, I'm hoping to get, you know, much bigger sizes for the curvy girls. Body inclusive. How about us old women? Whatever. Yeah, I want, you know, I want young girls in my board shorts. I want old women in my board shorts. I want skinny girls. I want big girls. Like, uh, you know, I want all women. I want to make my um, board shorts accessible to all women. So that's, that's the goal. Kayala Kennelly, what a legend. Hope you guys enjoyed that. When we come back, we'll check out Carissa Moore's fifth world title win. We'll see you on the other side of the commercial break. NorthShoreBoardBroker.com. Buying and selling a wide variety of surfboards, sups, lessons, and more. Find your perfect match today. Town Hawaii is now open, featuring the popular Polynesian block print designs from the Cook Islands and Tav Pacific. Tav Hawaii proudly offers an exclusive design for our islands. Check us out at Instagram at Tav Hawaii. Sponsored in part by Sea Hawaii, a native Hawaiian owned and operated business. We ain't your mama's muu muu. Aloha guys and welcome back. We heard it was a hard year for all the pro surfers out there, but next up let's head to California for the World Surf League's final battle for the world title. result in my whole career you know so um, I just keep it like simple like one hit at a time just enjoying to surf lower by, by yourself <laughs> tough to pick like a great wave out there there's kind of like a, a rip running through the left and it's kind of creating like these ribs on the right and and my whole plan yeah I was just I wanted to stick to the rights and and uh, try and pick off a clean one but I don't know it's funny out here it's like sometimes it's the third wave of the sets usually the best but it felt like today was actually the first ones and I was kind of stuck in inside for those so yeah it was uh not my finest moment, that's for sure. But, you know, Joanne, she's a, a really tough competitor and happy to see you go through and can't wait to watch the rest of the day. emotions under the sun today uh, some big moments and uh, I was nearly there you know I just one decision that cost me the heat and um, that's surfing and over my years I've learned to be able to kind of zoom out from that and try and see the bigger picture that to get there and to get to that moment and give myself an opportunity I had to really push myself this year and some other big moments and, and evolve my surfing so uh, so credit to my team and um, yeah, just getting up every morning and having the belief that I could be here on this day. 
But man, it's a heartbreaker that it's not not my uh, day to hold the cup. Big congratulations to our Hawaiian champion. She rips, and for sure there'll be more to come. We'll be right back. Tab Hawaii is now open, featuring the popular Polynesian block print designs from the Cook Islands and Tab Pacific. Tab Hawaii proudly offers an exclusive design for our islands. Check us out at Instagram at Tab Hawaii. Sponsored in part by Sea Hawaii, a native Hawaiian owned and operated business. We ain't your mama's mu'u mu'u. Hey guys, I'm Paige Delaner. Thanks for checking out this show. Now we're going to cruise to the Supergirl Pro for the biggest women's surfing competition in the world. Check it out. It's been a long time since I had the jersey on in the ocean. I was fortunate enough to do a couple surf ranch events through this weird time, but yeah, that was the first time in the ocean and I feel like there were some priority mess ups and wondering what's going on, but yeah, we're all getting used to it. We're all getting back, so it's, it's fun. Definitely very comfortable um, just in all the conditions here now with the low tide, high tide, next to the pier, away from the pier. Um, that's probably been the most benefit, I think, from being based here now and, yeah, kind of just utilizing getting better in um, really tricky conditions and just maybe smarter is my whole goal for um, the rest of 2021. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've gotten second here a couple times. I've gotten third a bunch as well, so I'm really stoked to um, get that win. It feels really nice. Um, such a fun final. Um, did, a, did an air reverse for the win, which was really special. It's something I've been like kind of working on. Um, and yeah, I'm really stoked to pull it off. Really fun. I've gotten second here a couple times, so it was awesome to take out the win. And um, everyone's been serving so well this whole event, so stoked to come on top. It's something that I've been working on, and uh, my, my goal, you know, just in general, is to push the progression of women's serving. And, um, I'm really stoked I was able to pull it off. That was uh, really fun. Check this out, guys. Now we are flashing back to an interview with Makani Adric, who's one of the best big wave surfers in the world. It's really important for me, along with a lot of the other girls, to be able to show the world what we can do um, and support the history of women surfing. I have a lot of respect for Waimea Bay and 
the place that I've grew up here in the North Shore. So respect, when it comes to respect, it's a really big thing for me. <laughs> Get to the right. Oh, um, somebody wiped oh. out. Oh. I kind of went through the list of girls who got invited. I may be the youngest, but I'm super excited to be surfing against girls who have more years of experience surfing the bay. It's a different wave for me, probably one of the more exciting waves I've ever surfed. Um, you do definitely get an adrenaline rush surfing here at Waimea Bay. Um, not many people say, could say they surfed it. So for me, it's a whole new opportunity um, to be having able, to be able to surf a wave like this. Um, not many people do it. The girls out there, I give props to being able to surf it and actually drop in. Um, and we kind of work together. Like when you see another girl out there, you're stoked to have her. It's not too many girls surf Waimea Bay. So to have someone else like you, a female, out there. Um, it gives us more excitement, um, love, support for one another. Wow, local sunset girl Makani is backside at Waimea Bay. She's so incredible. Thanks so much for watching us, guys. Make sure you tune in on Facebook and Spectrum 16, Saturdays at 9.30 p.m. Thank you for supporting the women athletes, and we want to Give a big shout out to Chesney before we go for taking home a national amateur title and a big trophy. We're sure there's much more to come from this strong athlete. Ahui ho, love you guys, and aloha.